For centuries, a disease has ravaged the globe, visiting nearly all corners at one time or another. In Europe, so great was the threat of this disease that in the early 18th century, the Pope commissioned one of his most trusted physicians to investigate. Giovanni Lancisi's De Bovilla Feste is his detailed study of the disease and represents the first concerted effort to control it. Historians believe that in 4th century Europe, the cattle disease, Rinderpest, may have contributed to the downfall of the Roman Empire. Since then, Rinderpest has killed hundreds of millions of cattle worldwide. Untreated, it kills within days, wiping out whole herds and causing devastating economic losses wherever it has taken hold. It was a bad disease. If the veterinary people didn't come, it would wipe out all the cattle that we owned. But now a huge international campaign over the past generation has led to the announcement that Rinderpest has been wiped from the face of the earth. One of the amazing things about this achievement is that it's only the second time in the history of the world that a disease has been eradicated. One of the last pockets was in East Africa, where cattle are crucial to the whole community, and where this man was central to coordinating the program to eradicate the disease. In this episode, Dr. Dickens Chebu, a veterinary epidemiologist from Kenya, is our Earth reporter. He tells a story of how one of the world's most destructive diseases has been stamped out after centuries of trying. A lot of people don't know, but the truth of the matter is that livestock contributes 30% of the agricultural GDP in Africa. And that is a very high contribution to the national economies. My name is Dr. Dickens Malanga Chibeu. I work for the Inter-African Bureau for Animal Resources, based here in Nairobi. I have spent the last 30 years of my life fighting for the eradication of rinderpest. This is how the disease looked like. There were mouth lesions, eye discharges, diarrhea, and finally, death of the animals. It spreads like wildfire in animals that are, have no protection. So in a herd of 100 animals, you can lose them all within 10 days. When I was growing up, actually I grew up on a farm. My father was a farmer and in the 60s and 70s, uh, the veterinary department used to come and vaccinate animals during the month of August. And um, it wasn't after I joined the university that I realized that the disease they had been vaccinating against was rinderpest. This disease affected many people across the world mostly pastoralists, people who depend on livestock for their livelihood. Some of my most fulfilling professional experiences have been out in the field searching for rinderpest. Rinderpest entered Eastern Africa in mid-1880s through the port of Masawa uh, in Ethiopia. The disease was actually brought in by the Italian army who had imported uh, cattle from all the way from India. And once it got into Ethiopia, it quickly spread in the whole of Ethiopia and all the neighboring countries. In Kenya here, the disease spread uh, southwards and um, landed even in Maasai land where we're headed to right now. We are here to meet Mzelangas, who lives in Old Shobor, behind Kenya's famous Ngong Hills. He has kept cattle for years, and this is a lifestyle that his children and grandchildren have inherited. Cattle mean a lot to the Maasai which is why their health is so important to them. 
Ah. We slaughter our cows and eat their meat. We also drink their milk. We sell our cows to help educate our children. Selling the cows also enables us to buy things like cars when we need to. We buy land with the money from cows. Cows are very valuable to the Maasai. Mselangas has a herd of over 200 cattle. But things weren't always this good in the past. I asked Mselangas, what diseases used to affect your cattle in the past? A lot of diseases used to affect our cattle. There was foot and mouth disease. There was also East Coast fever disease. Our cattle were also affected by anthrax, which was very bad. And then there was also rinderpest disease. That disease called rinderpest, is it still around now or what happened? Rinderpest is no longer there. The veterinary people got rid of it a long time ago. This disease, Rinderpest, did it look like this? Please look at these pictures and let me know if this is what it looked like. Yes, this is what the cows looked like. Yes, diarrhea. That's how their mouths looked like. It was bad. If the veterinary people didn't come, it will wipe out all the cattle that we owned. Did you think that this disease would ever be eradicated? We will just wait for the cattle to die. We didn't think it would end. This disease affected the livelihoods and threatened the very existence of communities across the world. A cure had to be found. A key milestone in the battle against Rinderpest came here on the outskirts of Nairobi, a significant achievement for African science. The Veterinary Research Institute at Muguga is important in the history of Rinderpest. The Rinderpest tissue culture vaccine was developed here. Before the development of the vaccines, the only way to control Rinderpest for hundreds of years was quarantine and stamping out. But in the 1950s, Walter Plowright, a British researcher based at Muguga, began research on the Rinderpest vaccine. The vaccine was known as the Plowright vaccine. It was a giant step forward, but it was to prove only part of the answer. The, the work done by Walter Plowright and collaborator in, is here in Muguga really uh, something very important in the uh, Rinderpest eradication program. GP15 it was an African Union program in collaboration with FAO. The, the key objective was mainly one, is to reduce the incidence of the Rinderpest in Africa. At the end of GP15, Rinderpest was under control. In GP15 campaign, vaccination was very successful. However, the campaign ended without follow-up program for surveillance and check and test if they have remaining foci anywhere in the same area. The, the vaccine that existed, the basic vaccine, is called the Plowright vaccine. And that was actually the impetus for JP15, the first attempt to eradicate Rinderpest. A single infectious particle of this vaccine actually provided lifelong immunity in cattle. And the only problem was you needed to keep it cold, and that created delivery problems. The heat-sensitive vaccine could not survive in the hot, remote areas of Somalia, Ethiopia, and northern Kenya in the Somali ecosystem, which had the last remaining reservoirs of the disease. To eradicate the disease from areas like this, required two problems to be overcome. A vaccine that could be transported to remote areas and a way of organizing the disease control efforts across national boundaries. We are now headed to one place in Kenya where cattle is big business. Garissa in northeastern Kenya is home to the country's biggest cattle market. It's a long drive, but it will be worth it. Hopefully, we'll meet some transboundary pastoralists who have come to sell their cattle. 
Garissa was very important uh, in the whole process of Rindapes eradication. One, uh, to being a provincial headquarters, it served as the control post for the whole of northeastern province, which uh, fortunately or unfortunately uh, was also within the Somali ecosystem. This area that we are entering is where the last pockets of Rindapes were in this whole region. It straddles three different countries and is known as the Somali ecosystem. This livestock market is the largest in the region of the Somali ecosystem. Pastoralists who come here come, come from as far as Somalia in the east, this direction, Ethiopia in the north, and all the neighboring counties uh, in this region, Mandera, Wajia. Transboundary movement of livestock has been going on in this region for centuries. As usual, it's very busy at this market and it can get busy. Sometimes the market has up to 8,000 cattle. We are here to meet Mze Haji, a transboundary pastoralist who just sold half his cattle this morning. I can see your cattle look very healthy. Have you sold these ones yet? Not yet, not yet. What route did you take to get to this market? From Somalia, I passed through Hulugo, then Galmagala, passed through the forest, traveled along Tana River, and arrived here. Please tell me, what does nomadism mean to you, the people of Garissa? Nomadism is my whole life. I like keeping cattle, as it provides for all my needs. It's a way of life that has been practiced for years by my parents, grandparents, and many generations before them. After the cattle reach this market, how do the people here benefit? It's impossible to count the number of people who benefit here. There are two main ways that people benefit from cattle. There are those people who bring cattle here either from their farms or pastoralists who travel with their cattle. Other people based at the market also benefit, such as the local council, truck loaders and truck drivers who take the cattle to Nairobi. Infectious diseases don't respect boundaries, borders, and so forth. So often to have a good control program, you have to have international cooperation amongst neighboring countries. Uh, the Rinderpest program was somewhat unique, and one of the real strengths was we managed to generate a tremendous international interest and cooperation. And at, by the end of the campaign, we were actually taking more of an ecosystem approach rather than a national country-by-country -country approach. The threat of Rinderpest was finally about to disappear for good. But what was the secret? It wasn't just another vaccine, but a new way of organizing the global effort, one with far-reaching implications for other diseases, including those affecting other species, including humans. The centuries-long story of the battle against Rinderpest brings us back to Rome, where in the 18th century, Pope Clement commissioned the first organized study of the disease and efforts to suppress it. Modern Rome is home to the headquarters of the organization that has been successful in coordinating the global eradication of a disease that's cost over a billion dollars in the past generation. 
I have come to Rome with colleagues from around the world as part of the final stages of the Global Render Pace Eradication Program, which was coordinated from here. I am about to go into a session of top-level people, including government ministers from key countries. This one is for a um, high-level meeting where ministers uh, from across the world have been invited to also hear the progress we've made in the eradication and basically inform them that we have succeeded and very soon we shall be making the global announcement. That there's an air of jubilation at the moment because you, the Director General has just made a statement which is uh, far from being ambiguous. It's completely unambiguous that FAO considers that uh, Rinderpest has been eradicated. And to hear him say that, you know, really adds something for all of us who've been working in it for so long. In the late 1980s, after a second African pandemic, Global animal health leaders convened in Rome and formulated a new plan to eliminate rinderpest, not only in Africa, but in the remaining reservoirs of the disease in West and South Asia. The new approach was to track and combat the disease across national borders and in the remotest of areas. It was this approach, alongside a new thermostable vaccine, one capable of withstanding the heat, that began to spell success. The thermostable vaccine was, was very important for enabling a lot of the program in, in certain key areas, particularly in Africa. As the heat-stable vaccine became available, we looked at new models for actually working with the pastoralists to train them to deliver the vaccine in the context of meeting some of their other animal health needs. When vaccines came, they were very effective. Isolation of cattle and other control methods were reduced. There's now a lot of movement of livestock looking for pasture and we sold more cattle. So the vaccines were good. No more quarantine. Trade is okay. Cattle can now move from one place to another without fearing rinderpest. One of the things we did, and one of the things that came through as part of the Rinderpest program, was we really began to understand the knowledge level of traditional communities about animal disease. They know all the major diseases. They can describe all the major diseases. It was they actually knew better than we did where the disease was. And towards the end, we identified the final foci of Rinderpest actually by tapping into these traditional information networks and letting them tell us where we needed to go and how we needed to do things. And the remaining foci of Africa were in remote and insecure areas, particularly some war zones. Uh, southern Sudan, uh, which was a long-standing place of insecurity. The Somali ecosystem. And in those areas, veterinary services had difficulty entering. So important was the control of Rinderpest in Sudan that even the warring factions agreed to allow the vaccinations to continue. During the war, there is an agreement between the government and the Ripoll at that time that vaccination should be carried in, in both areas. The areas under the government control or under the... the, the and this is was, was something unique. Declaration of Sudan by OIE free from Rinder Besa. It was cheer and tears for, for the people in Sudan. They are very happy because Sudan mainly depends on, 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 on livestock. It is second to oil it produces. We earn about 20% of, of, of national or foreign earnings from livestock support. What happened in East Africa is just an example of what has happened across the globe. Hundreds of millions of dollars have been spent in even some of the most remote corners of the world. The success of Rinderpest eradication in India, I can attribute to one single factor, that is, Government of India funded the entire program. Entire program, 
and it was a top-down approach. Whatever government of India said, every state followed it. And I'll be, uh, you'll be surprised to know that, that in 10 years of rendered personal education, the country was charged. Every veterinarian in this country was determined to see that rendered personal eradicated. When smallpox was eradicated, a sample of the virus was kept. Now, a decision has been taken to store samples of the Rinderpest virus for safekeeping. But to avoid any controversy, how will this be done? We have been able to learn quite a bit from the smallpox uh, eradication, not so much in the methodologies that were used, but what's coming to play today with Rinderpest is to ensure that the virus is safeguarded in laboratories, that there's proper custodianship of that, what we call sequestration of the virus. In Africa, we as the African Union into Africa Bureau of Animal Resources have secured the agreement that these viruses be stored at the African Union and African Vaccine Center, which is a reference laboratory for vaccine quality control and has facilities that can safely store uh, the viruses. If they're stored in laboratories all over, there's the possibility of an accidental escape in these days of bioterrorism, there's a possibility of malicious release of the agent. So we need to make sure that Rinderpest doesn't come back by storing the, the viruses in a safe laboratory. One of the amazing things about this achievement is that it's only the second time in the history of the world that a disease has been eradicated, uh, removed from circulation in its natural hosts. The first was smallpox in the human field, and now we have rinderpest. And this is a disease that has devastated this planet for centuries, e even millennia. And now, of course, we're really quite excited at thinking that the lessons that we've learned from that can feed into perhaps the progressive control of some other diseases. I don't think the Green Revolution would have taken place had it not been for the rinderpest vaccine because those animals were able to plow soil, take the crops to the marketplace. So I think that uh, a lot of people, whether they know it or not, should be gratified that rinderpest has been eradicated. In the veterinary profession, particularly in the countries where we worked, there's a much greater appreciation for the knowledge and wisdom of the livestock owners and it really takes a team effort to bring together the modern knowledge with the community's knowledge to be successful. Any campaign should have a follow-up program to make sure that the campaign was successful, all of the disease uh, area has been wiped out, and this was the most essential part of the Rinderpest campaign. Well, the major lessons we have learned from the eradication of Rinderpest include, first of all, the need for sustained political support and goodwill at all levels, at the national level, at the regional level, and globally. The second lesson that we've learned is the need for partnerships, productive partnerships and collaborations between key technical institutions as well as national governments. Very many African countries, at one time or so, many of them did not believe they would eradicate rinderpest in the near future. When I saw it finally, you know, eradicated, I feel like I have achieved what I set out to, to achieve professionally. For a lot of these people, as you heard them explain, livestock is their livelihood. And eradicating a disease like rinderpest that used to wipe out whole herds, what you've basically done is that you've secured their livelihoods. Anyone could be an Earth reporter. To find out more about how to join the global conversation, go to www.open.ac.uk forward slash openlearn forward slash 
Earth Reporters. Thank you.